The M1 Abrams tank was one of the most famous and best tanks in the world. If tanks are mentioned in popular culture, history books, and games, there are bound to be Abrams there. In this video, I will talk about the production story of the M1 Abrams tank, the purpose for which it was produced, and its technical features. In the 1960s, during the heaviest years of the Cold War, there were two tanks guarding the borders on the Western Front. One of them was the American-made M60 Patton tank, and the other was on the German front, which was thought to be the region where the war would be most severe. Leopard 1 Tank In the 60s, these two tanks managed to balance NATO against the Soviets. It was very good against the T-Series tanks owned by the Soviets at that time. But when the Soviets pushed tanks such as the T-62 and T-64 to the front in the 1960s, tanks on the Western Front fell short. At the same time, the Soviets began to invest in anti-tank weapons during this period. Apart from these, it has produced helicopters and special planes developed for tank hunting. In short, the Soviet Union had reached a level that would wipe NATO troops off the map in a possible land war. That's why America and Germany understood the need for a new generation of tanks, and in the late 1960s they came together to jointly produce a tank. In 1965, the MBT-70 program was finalized and the purpose of this program was to produce a joint main battle tank of the USA and Germany. Originally, the aim was to produce a medium tank, but this later became the main battle tank. The project started, but it never progressed well because the expectations of America and Germany from the tank to be produced were different. America wanted a 152mm tank gun instead of a standard tank gun. But Germany is best at tank guns, and Germany wanted a 120mm tank gun as standard. They were especially looking for a more effective weapon against the T-64's famous 125mm tank gun. The approaches of America and Germany to the tank were different. These two countries were adopting different tank schools. After the war, the Americans adopted the Anglo-Saxon school. Armor protection was important in this school. Previously, I prepared a video about tank schools. But let me repeat briefly for those who haven't watched it. Tanks produced in the world adopt three different schools. One of them is the Anglo-Saxon school. According to this school, armor protection is important. If your tank is very durable, you will win the war. Another school is the German school. According to the German school, the important thing is firepower. According to the German school, the first to open fire and destroy the enemy tank wins the battle. The last school is the Russian or Soviet school. The Russians put firepower or armor protection in the background. Instead, they seek speed, agility, and numerical superiority. According to the Russian school, the one with more tanks wins the battle. Anyway, back to the topic, America adopted the Anglo-Saxon school after the war. For America, tank warfare meant the nightly wars of the Middle Ages. Therefore, while America wanted to prioritize armor protection in the MBT-70 program, Germany wanted the tank gun to be strong. This is probably why Germany has produced the best tank barrels in the world since World War II. Although Porsche worked for this project, no tank was produced and Germany left the project. America developed this project until 1971, but it did not continue. After this project, the two countries turned to different fields. Germany developed the Leopard 2 in the following years. In the USA, the company Chrysler wanted to produce a tank for the American Army for a long time. When the MBT-70 program was canceled, they did not miss this opportunity and worked on the XM-1 prototype they had developed for the American Army, and the prototype appeared in 1976. The Pentagon liked the project and wanted it to be developed further. That's why Chrysler started working with General Motors. In 1978, a new prototype appeared, a special prototype made at the request of the General Motor Company. This prototype was more appreciated and production started with the signing of the contract in 1978. The first series of M1 Abrams tanks began to be produced in 1979 and in 1980, it entered service with the American Land Forces. The first produced M1S are much lighter than the current M1S. 
Their combat weight was 58 tons, and their main armament was very interesting. The first version of the M1 tank began to be exhibited in the U.S. fairs, but he realized that he had serious problems while using this tank. In the reports, it was said that the armor protection of the tank was not good enough. The firepower of the tank was claimed to be quite low. Upon such complaints, the Pentagon management stopped the production of this tank in 1985 and decided to make an update for this tank. Since 1985, work began on the new version of the M1 tank, the M1A1. M1A1 tanks had more advanced tank guns. Armor protection has been further increased. Previously, depleted uranium was used on the front of the tank, and later they covered the entire hull with this armor. Abrams tanks had their first combat experience in 1997 in Iraq. During the war, American tanks destroyed about 40 Iraqi tanks. The tanks used by the Iraqi army were not that good either. The export versions they bought from Russia, especially to be cheaper, had extremely simple and primitive armor. Saddam bought cheap versions not only in terms of armor but also in terms of firepower. The Sabo shells used by the T-72 did not cause any damage to the Abrams tanks. At the end of the Gulf War, the success of the Abrams tank was recognized all over the world. It was propagated that American tanks are better than Russian tanks. From that date on, Abrams tanks were used wherever the American army stepped in. In Kosovo, in the Second Iraq War, in Afghanistan, in the Civil War in Egypt, etc. These tanks have taken part in all kinds of wars and have been modernized accordingly. At the end of each conflict, its shortcomings were noticed and it was modernized accordingly. The first version of the Abrams tank after the first Gulf War was the M1A2 version. The amount of uranium in the armor has been increased and the armor skirts have been further strengthened. After the Second Gulf War, different modernizations were applied especially for the residential battles in Iraq. For example, the M1A2 Tusk modernization transformed a frontline battle tank like the Abrams into a residential battle tank. A tank phone has been added to the rear of the tank to improve communication between the tank and infantry. Israel supported active protection systems, centipede detection systems, remote control system for the machine guns in the tower, target designation systems, and many more systems have been added and updated. In this way, Abrams tanks became a tank that could withstand all kinds of battles. But that came at a cost. The Abrams tank got a little heavier and a little bigger with each modernization. The combat weight of the first generation Abrams was 58 tons, and today's Abrams tanks have a curb weight of more than 61 tons. According to some allegations, these tanks can reach over 70 tons on the battlefield, depending on the situation. It got a little heavy and bulky, but it became a highly advanced tank. Currently, according to many military experts, the M1 Abrams is the strongest, strongest, and most reliable tank used in the Western Bloc after the Leopard 2A7. If you want, let me talk about the technical features of this tank. Since there are so many different versions of this tank, I will talk about the technical features of the current production M1A2 Abrams SEP tank. The M1A2 Abrams SEP is 9.7 meters tall, 3.7 meters wide, and 2.5 meters high. The final version of Abrams weighed up to 66.8 tons, but on the battlefield this weight exceeds 70 tons. A very interesting engine is used to move this 70-ton weight. Abrams does not use a diesel engine, as you know, diesel engines are used to provide power in modern tanks because diesel engines are both economical in fuel and torque, so they can move heavy tanks easily. The Honeywell AGT 1500 turbine engine drives the Abrams tank. This engine can run not only on gasoline, but also on any fuel. This engine can run on diesel or even jet fuel. This engine was the turbine engine developed for airplanes and helicopters at the time. A huge tank like Abrams can accelerate to 70 km per hour thanks to this engine. In fact, it can reach speeds of up to 100 km per hour, but the maximum speed of the Abrams is limited to 70, as the hull of the tank is not suitable for this. Even in September 2nd versions, this speed limit has been reduced to 65 km. The maximum range of the tank is 426 kilometers. 
This tank, which consumes 4 liters of liquid fuel in 1 kilometer, has a maximum range of 426 kilometers with its full tank, although it consumes so much fuel. According to NATO standards, the value that shows that a tank has good mobility is a power-to-weight ratio of 20 to 1. That is 20 horsepower per 1 ton. Abrams tanks do this well despite their weight. For example, a good ratio of 22 horsepower per ton has been achieved in the September 2nd versions. All Abrams tanks have four personnel. Commander, gunner, driver, and loader. Abrams tanks do not have an autoloader, but this tank has extremely high firepower. This tank can fire at the same target seven times per minute. Abrams tanks have a very advanced target detection system and all Abrams tanks are computer controlled. A licensed version of the L-44 tank gun used on the Leopard 2 is used on Abrams tanks. Each Abrams tank contains 42 ready-to-fire rounds. The shell compartment is isolated from the personnel compartment, so even if the tank is hit and the shells explode, nothing will happen to the personnel. Although serious Abrams tanks were destroyed in Iraq and Afghanistan, very few military personnel were damaged. In addition to the 120mm tank gun, there are 50 caliber machine guns and two 7.62mm machine guns. The Abrams tank has active and passive protection systems. As with all tanks in the world, there are fog mortars in the Abrams tank. In armor protection, Abrams tanks are extremely durable. The armor of the first generation Abrams tanks was extremely mediocre, but the new versions use the Chabam armor type. During the Second World War, steel was the first thing that came to mind when armor was mentioned. And how strong the armor was depended on the thickness of the armor. However, things changed after the 1960s. Chabam armor type has two armor steel plates and ceramic and ballistic plastic are used between these plates. In Abrams tanks, ceramic is used between these two steel plates. In order to strengthen its armor, depleted uranium began to be used in the steel parts of this tank. The reason for using uranium is this, uranium is dangerous and radioactive, but it is an extremely dense element. When used as armor, it becomes an extremely solid tank. 8,800 Abrams tanks have been produced so far. Apart from America, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Kuwait, Iraq, and Australia use the Abrams tank. By the way, if there is a video request about the pros and cons of this tank, I can do it because although this tank seems perfect, it has very serious problems, but that's it for now. Thanks for watching the video. If you found the video useful, do not forget to like it and subscribe to the channel if you want to be aware of such videos.